Coming up, the commissioner of police says crime is down and has the stats to back it up. Pen to paper to help the fight against crime. A police officer goes to court asking for bail. And women's basketball hit the court. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. Police released crime stats for 2013 today, showing that crime across the board has gone down. Good evening, I'm Andrew Knowles. I'm Keisha Adderley. Thanks for joining us. Well, 2013 saw a proliferation of murders and a large number of shootings. Despite this increase last year, Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade applauded the efforts of officers to keep pace. And as Clint Watson tells us, serious crime is down 4%. The Bahamas is not the problem. We've got problems in New Providence, and it's a place that we need to continue to work hard. And Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade has the numbers for 2013 to back up this theory. We already know that last year's 120 murders saw an increase over the previous year's 111. But what we now know is despite what appeared to be an overall increase in crime, serious crimes against a person was actually down in attempted murders, armed robberies, robberies, and attempted robberies. Police have worked hard to solve the cases of murder. 61 persons were arrested and charged. That's a detection rate of 51% and rising. Police also found out that 39 of the murder cases were retaliation as a result of ongoing feuds, followed by 24 cases robbery-related and 17 cases domestic-related and another 17 unresolved conflicts. But there was also another common trend with crime, arresting those who were very familiar to police. It is a concern because we're not talking about people who are prepared from where we sit to make a change. So we've been focusing on targeting and rearresting people that are on bail who have committed serious crimes. And I need us to get that clear. And we need to stop playing games with it. There's been calls for the death penalty as a deterrent to murder. And while the commissioner did not give his personal view, he did respond by reinforcing calls he's received from the public. If John Brown murders someone and John Brown receives the punishment appropriate to what he's done and is executed, then you won't have to tell us that he's a repeat offender and he's murdered three other people. Rape and unlawful sexual intercourse saw an increase over 2012. There were 104 rapes compared to 96 the previous year. There were 154 unlawful sexual intercourse cases as compared to 151 in 2012. Guns continue to be the weapon of choice for serious crimes like murders. Despite police best efforts to rid the streets of illegal firearms, 438 to be exact. Last year, 197 people became victims of shooting, but police credit their success in solving crime and in most cases preventing other crimes by one measure they described as their most effective tool in the crime fight. The best work I repeat in respect of murders and rapes and firearm cases and serious harm, all of these cases is a result of people saying, I'm concerned and I'm not going to be a part of this, I'm calling it in. And you know what's even better? Those people remain anonymous. The Commissioner of Police also unveiling his 2014 policing plan. It detailed strategies, seven to be exact, on how they plan on addressing crime, ranging from better detection, preventative measures, dealing with young people, dealing with the private sector, better partnerships, greater efficiency. He's hoping that with these plans in place, we can see a better year in the fight on crime. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Officials from national security are still getting feedback on crime. Grand Bahama residents will soon be in a position to present their views as a crime forum will be mounted there tomorrow. National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage says he's delivering on a promise to move the event to Freeport after relevant consultations with residents from that island. We want to engage the public. We want to hear from them what their ideas are, what suggestions they have to make. And in the case of, of, of Grand Bahama, because it's unlikely that we'll be able to get there and have a forum as frequently as we could do in New Providence, we're more likely to 
have a situation where we dialogue with them as well. The forum is set for 7.30 p.m. at Christ the King Anglican Church. However, Minister Nottage noted that he will also be meeting with religious leaders there ahead of the forum. We've also had a request while we're down there to meet with uh, Pastors Forum. And so we intend to meet with them uh, Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock, have a discussion with the church leaders who attend that uh, meeting, explain to them the role that we feel that the church can play in assisting us in fighting crime, and hear from them um, what suggestions they have to offer about uh, crime fighting and, and their involvement therein. Testimony continued today in the Nevin Curry murder trial. Curry is accused of killing Stanley McIntosh in Abaco back in 2012. During today's proceedings, McIntosh's sister recalled that on February 25th of 2012 was the last time she saw her brother alive. She told jurors at that time he appeared happy and full of life, but just two days later he was dead. McIntosh's body was discovered in the area of the Don McKay Boulevard in Marsh Harbor, Abaco, with multiple gunshot injuries. Senior Justice John Isaacs is hearing the case. A judge has granted 33-year-old former police officer Wenzel Davis $4,000 bail with two sureties. However, the court ordered him not to leave the country without permission and he has to stay away from any witnesses in the case. Davis was arraigned earlier, or a few weeks ago that is, for possession of an unlicensed firearm and seven live rounds of ammunition. He's also facing two other separate firearm and ammunition charges. He pleaded not guilty to all the charges and the case has been adjourned. A red letter day for Her Majesty's prison as a new agreement between the Bahamas and Canada makes way for operational improvements at the aging prison facility. In fact, the Memorandum of Understanding between Correction Service Canada and Her Majesty's prisons will provide for intense training for local prison officers and at this point will run indefinitely. Kendino Knowles tonight tells us more about the agreement negotiated and endorsed by the Ministry of National Security. Having have the exposure of what Canada has to offer, um, coming back is basically to augment what we have here and what been taught there. Deputy Superintendent Bernadette Murray is one of two prison officers selected to take part in the first of a series of training initiatives made possible by the new Bahamas-Canada Agreement. She says the goal for her and her co-deputy, Duan Clare, is to help change the mindset of prison staff and inmates. We, we have already started the, the 80 hours of training for, for staff in, in, in correctional management. And, and thus far, it, it has made a tremendous change in terms of um, uh, the mindset of prison officers. Prison staff, your country is depending on you. Depending on you to introduce and deliver a new correctional measure which are designed to bring about positive change. National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage explains that the agreement establishes further relations with the Canadian government in the field of corrections with the aim of sharing information and expertise. It sets out a framework that provides for cooperation, information sharing and technology transfer. Its intent is to facilitate the modernization of our penal system, to bring it in line with international conventions and practices. Correctional Services Canada will work with us to improve our policies, technology, security intelligence, correctional programs, facility planning, research and evaluation, data gathering, training and leadership development for the prison. And for Dr. Nottage, the expectations are high, as he says the need is enormous. He also expressed great enthusiasm for the journey ahead. Impressed with the leadership, both at HMP and in the Ministry of National Security, CSC Commissioner Don Head welcomed the officers to Canada for what will be an extensive corrections training program. I look forward to them coming uh, and uh, being part of our executive and leadership team in the Correctional Service of Canada. And hopefully learning some of the things that we do that they can take back and discuss and engage the leadership back here, the staff, the staff association in helping to advance good, effective correctional services in the Bahamas. Now the two deputy prison superintendents will leave for Canada sometime soon where they will spend the next three months undergoing some intense training. Now they will return and teach their colleagues what they've learned. Kendino Knowles, ZNS Network News.
In our first look at whether a cold front drape across the northwest Bahamas is pushing towards the south, we'll go through the capital during the late night and early morning hours. But outside of our studios just now, we have mostly cloudy skies, temperatures 75 degrees, relative humidity 78%. Your winds out of the west at 5 knots barometric pressure, 1,013.6 millibars. That's 29.93 inches, and it is steady. But stay tuned. Temperatures around the family of islands, travel, and boating forecast is still to come. Up in the Bahamas tonight, the government responds to the opposition on capital punishment. To hit the streets. And, and then women's basketball hits the court. You're watching the Bahamas tonight. This portion of the news is brought to you by Shell Helix Ultra. Performance you can see.